Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, and what I'm really into these days, mysteries and thrillers. Love them. And one of our friends, Elena Urquhart, you might know her from a little podcast called Morbid, wrote The Butcher and the Wren. It's a really great thriller about a serial killer. I mean, it is so scary. I cannot wait for the next one. And I love to listen to it. And guess what? As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Your last day of vacation and you found time for a deep tissue massage followed by a long mud bath then a two-hour nap. Because you're an American Express Platinum Guard member and booked your stay at a fine hotel and resort through Amex Travel, which means a 4 p.m. checkout. And those relaxing vacation vibes can keep going at the airport in the Centurion Lounge. Just a splash. Before you board the plane back to reality. That's the powerful backing of American Express. See how to elevate your travel experiences at americanexpress.com slash with Amex. Terms apply. Professional welder Shayna Ford used VR training developed by ForgeFX to hone her skills as a welder. The more time that you spend practicing it, that's what separates a good welder from a great welder. VR training can help students like Shayna repeatedly practice specific skills. Virtual reality definitely helps because the more muscle memory that you have, the smoother your weld is. Explore more stories like Shayna's at meta.com slash metaverse impact. Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Watch What Crappens. That's Ben over there, and I'm Tan Mom. So great to see everybody. How you doing today, Ben? I'm great, thank you. How are you doing? Good. I went and got a chemical peel and um, came back with a very funny looking crazy looking face and i actually just wiped off a lot of the brown tint that was on there and i still look like tan mom so there you go why do they put brown tint on it i don't know it's tinted brown i don't i don't know why whatever hmm. chemical thing it is or maybe it's pulling out my tint i don't know maybe it's pulling out my lebanese i don't know what it's doing if it's chemically <laughs> peeling away the leb in me i don't know but wow it's something i come i come here looking crazy every time and now i wait for my face to slowly fall off mm. well everybody thanks for coming to the show we're not sponsored by chemical peels which you would never guess from listening to me for two seconds but we are also not sponsored by bravo and we're going to talk about them anyway so welcome to our bravo show today we are talking about a peacock show though and it's called traders but before we get into that um come see us on our european tour guess where london dublin and birmingham Okay, mm -hmm. those are our places. It's gonna be in May. Also in May, we're gonna be in Los Angeles doing the Netflix is a joke comedy festival. You actually do not have to buy tickets for the whole festival to come to that, which is nice. So if you just wanna to come to the show, come see it. It's at the Kookaburra Lounge. You get tickets for that and the European tour at watchwhatcrappens.com. That's also where you'll find links to our Patreon, which is where you will find this video that we're on right now. Hi, and um, our bonus episodes. This week's bonus was the Real Housewives of Miami reunion. Hilarious episode, so good. Go join Patreon, do it. Okay, um, that's all for me. Uh, Anything you need to talk about today, man? Yes, what I wanna say is that part two of that reunion we're gonna also have up probably later today or tomorrow morning, uh, but that will be on the main feed. So uh, if you're wondering where that is, it's coming. We haven't recorded it yet. We haven't talked about it yet, but that's coming. The other thing to talk about is I'm really excited to go to London because I spent um, a large chunk of this weekend, like probably like many, many, many hours catching up on Love Island All-Stars UK. Uh, I'm only on episode 22, but I basically watched like 
20 episodes this week, this weekend. So I'm doing that partially because I'm a big Love Island UK fan, but also because I really want to work on my British accents. So that way I can just like fit in seamlessly when I'm over there, you know, and I'll be like, I'm a Scouts girl. I'm a Scouts girl. We like nice things in Scouts. I don't know if that's accurate or not. You're but. quite fair, <laughs> aren't you? Um, Scotland. Actually, it's very appropriate. So there's a guy named Anton on La Island UK, at least at where I'm at. Again, I'm behind. The show's actually over. But um, he's Scottish. And I feel like it makes me sad that Alan Cummings isn't more Scottish because Anton's really Scottish sounding. And um, I've really been enjoying hearing him talk. He's like, oh, what you got to do here is you just have to like lean into it. Like I'm a slow burner, but like, you know, I'm like here for you. And I just really enjoy his voice. And I just wish I had, a, I honestly just wish I had a better, I just wish I had any reason to do his voice. So I basically just made up this little preamble now so I could see if I could talk Scottish. Okay, so I'm really on one this morning. I'm really not focused. Okay, let's talk about the traitors. Uh, Episode 9 of the traitors! Or as I like to call it, murder! Murder! So sad. By the way, a song that I hate Right around the dance floor. I don't like that song either. I heard it today. I heard it while I was being traumatized. And the chemical peel chair, okay? And I guess now it's burned into my fucking brain because it's, you know, with a dose of trauma. Really don't yeah. like that song. I really don't like it. I don't I get don't it. I don't like it I don't either. understand the musical structure of it. I don't understand how it just changes keys at that one part for no reason. I just don't like it. Who is that girl? You know who she know. sings like, though? Sheena. Yeah. She sounds just like her. Murder at, murder at the dance, sir, her. Um, yeah, I don't like that song, and, uh, you know, I think it's like Saltburn is what really kind of like brought that song back, because apparently it's an old song, and, um, you know, there was a big, big long scene with that song, and, uh um, Well, I like that, because it had a big floppy penis in it. Now, that was a good scene. I know, I know, but I wish I had, like, better a better song to flop around to, you know? But now everyone loves that song, everyone's, like, obsessed, it's on TikTok, it's like a thing, that song is a thing. I don't know. I'm not. I haven't fully embraced that song. I haven't really fully embraced a lot of music lately. Well, you know, you know welcome to Carly Rae Jepsen. You know, yeah. <laughs> welcome to aging. That's what I say. Oh, you I know, know who I have embraced, which no one cares because they're here to hear the traitors. But you know who I love, and I don't care. I'm not going to hide it anymore. Who? Olivia Rodrigo. Love her. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I really vibe She's with her. So angry, yeah. Uh, maybe that's why I like it. I totally get it. Okay, so let's go to the traitors. So they are at the vote for the round table on who they think is a traitor. And MJ has decided on Peter. Everyone was worried that she was going to flip on Bravo and she was going to get rid of Phaedra because the arguments were pretty decent. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, Peter's more annoying. So they get rid of Peter. Yeah, she did, she did the right thing by the audience, the wrong thing by her game. But uh, yeah, I was shocked. I thought for sure it was Phaedra going home. They were teasing this out. They just wanted to eke out another week of Phaedra to keep the audience interested. But I was like, surely she's going home. So I was genuinely shocked when MJ turned over her thing. and was like, Peter, she's like, it sucks. I really don't like this part of the game. But I felt like there was just way more evidence going in your direction than the other direction. Um, which is funny because there's no evidence for any of these votes. But, um, you know, but but. But in some ways, there was more evidence that Peter was the bad guy because he was acting squirrely. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Peter's own reactions to things were the evidence, I think. I mean, I would have thought he was guilty as hell. Hell, I was kind of yes. wondering, like, is he secretly guilty? Like, do they have a mm-hmm. secret traitor in the bunch? Because he did act extremely guilty. Um, so, yeah, bye. But also, I, I disagree uh, on the MJ thing. I think that it was good for MJ's game, even though she kept a murderer in the game, because bravo. You know, you don't yeah. want to let those CBS people or those MTV people get too far because they're complaining about the bond that the Bravo people had. But trust me, people from a straight network are way worse. OK, <laughs> yeah. Straight people have been bonding against gay people and gay themed people. I guess Bravo, we could call them gay themed, right? Like they may not be gay, yeah. but they're like they're gay coded, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, look. 
And they're all they're all mad, especially Trishel. Look, all those Bravo people sticking together. Well, what the fuck have you been doing, Trishel? You gravitated towards CT right out the gate and Johnny Bananas. You would have gravitated towards your posse if you'd been given the chance. And unfortunately, if Berets could actually play this game, that would have been your click. But they aren't. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Watch what happened. What happened when uh, when CBS people stuck together? You had Dan and Poverty making terrible decisions which really framed and fucked up Phaedra's game. So don't blame the Bravo people. The Bravo people have to stick together because the CBS people fuck it up for them. Well, also, she was trying to stick with her own people. They just are on the losing side of the the bonding against other people. So whatever, suck it, losers. Trishel, here's a piece of advice. Put on a beret face and move forward. Yeah. So, um, by the way, it also makes sense for MJ to get rid of Peter because uh, the truth is that for the faithful, uh, if they get rid of all the traitors, then they split the money. So, um, maybe it's not such a bad thing to get rid of a few faithful so that we get a higher percentage of that pot, you know? Yeah, so um, Alan's like, Peter, you are disgusting. Your mother is waiting on the lawn in only her bra and creeping everybody out. So, please go. (laughs) So um, Peter's like, guys, I know I've been all gas and no brakes ever since you came out of the womb. Am I right? God, there's my little race car driver. I love you. By the way, the analogy I love to hear from a pilot. I know I've been all gas and no brakes. (laughs) Uh, Don't want to hear that for the person who is guiding my plane. Well, airplanes don't. What are they going to do? They don't put on the brakes. Well, only gas. I, well, I just would like to think that. Well, this is this is a good metaphor for why he wasn't able to win because he literally was not able to land the plane. On well, I would season. argue that I do not want my airline pilot to be slamming on the brakes. Okay, I'm gonna actually have to go off. I don't want to fly with you, Ben. I don't. That's <laughs> you know, one thing I mean, that the airline does not need brakes in the mid in mid air. Well, I'm thinking more like when it lands and on the tarmac, I kind of yeah, want well, the plane to stop moving at that's some true. point. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, as much as I enjoy that. That that rush it's not a terrible of... point, <laughs> but they could always just keep rolling until it stopped. You know, I don't you just know if I want like walk. yeah, I don't know if I want the plane version of speed, like a strange version where the plane can't go below fifty five miles per hour, but also isn't allowed to fly. Just, just pushing along. each other out. <laughs> um, so Peter is like, yeah, I've been all brakes and no gas, guys, but I'm a faithful till the end. I tried to save you. Uh. And so now John and the losing team are like, oh, we're so mad now. We told everyone and no one believed us. Well, unfortunately, you have falsely convicted multiple people on this show. And um, no one believes you because you have yes. leaked Terrible out all of your credibility. So blame yourselves, stupid yeah. team. Okay. Justice for Larsa Pippen. <laughs> Uh, never said by anyone, even in the show. So, um, uh, so anyway, they're all sad. And uh, Alan's like, an innocent faithful has been sacrificed to the altar of this round table. Time is running out to bring those traitors to justice. And Trisha by the does, way, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, what, why do we assume that the traitors are inherently bad people that need to be brought to justice? They're just like they were introverts. Picked. They were picked. It's not like you're not a born murderer in this, okay? This is definitely nurture, not nature. They weren't born murderers. You turned them into murderers, and now you're bitching that they're murderers. This is your fault. You touch their shoulders. They are selective people who like to keep to themselves. Doesn't mean that they're bad. Yeah, exactly. So then uh, Trishel's like, "Um, I guess there's nothing to be said right now. Oh, really? I'll bet you'll find a way. I'll bet you'll fucking find a way, Trishel. And sure (laughs) enough... Two seconds later, she goes, um, we tried to tell you guys. Oh, so nothing to say except we told you so. Shut up, Beret lady. I've had it with I'd you. Like to sp- <laughs> I'd like to speak to the manager of this round table, please. Thank you. <laughs> yes. We got so, another person, another Karen, saying, please stop using the term Karen. So I'm jumping off the Karen bandwagon and sticking with the Trishel bandwagon that yeah. ben, ben has put together. The new term for Karen is Trishel. Trishel. She's such a Trishel. So uh, she gets up and hugs CT and is like, thank you for having my back. Now we know. By the way, you don't know anything. You don't know anything. It's just that you had a hunch. Like they both theoretically, well, we know that Phaedra is bad. Not, not bad. She's a traitor. We know that tra- Phaedra is a traitor. But but like Trishel doesn't have any evidence that Trishel is a traitor. She just has a theory that she has decided is fact. It just happens to be true. 
because it just happens to be true. But it's not based off of any evidence or any facts whatsoever. It drives me nuts that she has this like cocky approach to this that is unfortunately very accurate. Yes. So um, Trishel is, you know, fury. She's like fury reborn. And she's like, I'm probably going to go home for this, but whatever, Sandra, I can't take it. And then CT um, is talking to John and he's like, hey, is this uh, is this harder than the world you're from in politics? And he's like, oh, mm. this is a much simpler, simpler land than the political, uh, much more difficult than the political landscape. This involves deep thinking and murderous intentions beyond any alarm. Like, please cut him off. Who told John <laughs> that they'd like to hear him talk? Enough with you. I like that later in the episode, people are finally like, let's, let's just kill John. I can't listen to him anymore. <laughs> just like, you should be limited to how many words you have in the house. She's like, yeah, let's kill him because he talks too much. It's like, remember when John was the victim of an asthma conspiracy? Well, uh, the other thing is, by the way, I just want to circle back to one other thing that I almost forgot to mention, which is that I was complaining that Trishel has no evidence to go off of. But the, actually, I take that back a little bit because Phaedra does not help her case. They vote out Peter. Peter is a faithful. It's like, sorry. Well, guys, I'm a faithful. Everyone around the table goes, ah, oh, shit. Everyone's like, sad and Phaedra just sips her water just shakes her head like hmm she Phaedra imbibes. you gotta like can you like she not guiltily act like imbibes food or beverage that's what <laughs> she does she really does do that and that was hilarious when she's like hmm I'm gonna gulp a uh, boiled egg she's like can I have a cup of boiled <laughs> eggs to drink thank you I'll have a Big Mac McDLT, a quarter pounder with some cheese filet, a fish, a hamburger a cheeseburger or a half a meal McDonald's Casey Goldie French fries regular or larger size please thank you so much I mean, like, at least try to act like a faithful who's upset that you accidentally sent a faithful home. But she's just like, ha ha. <laughs> you gotta rein it in there, Phaedra. Yeah, she's like turning the cross on her neck upside down. She's like, whoa, Phaedra, let's get a little subtlety there. Okay. <laughs> she's like barfing up pea soup. I'm like, Phaedra, come on now. <laughs> she's entering the castle, like, on her, <laughs> like, on her, like, hands and feet upside down. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah, she's like hand walking. What do you call that? <laughs> yeah, crab walking, hand walking. I don't know. I wish I, I love that every it time they, they depict a way. demon, like a a demon possessing someone in a movie, like suddenly that person has gone to yoga and and <laughs> I know gymnastics class for the past three decades of their life. You know, I know. Like, it's like wow, what? the Satan really loves Cirque du Soleil moves. Okay, <laughs> Satan loves that. Also, by the way, I know Satan is powerful, but he's not more powerful than flexibility. Okay. Like if you're if you just are not limber, not even Satan can fix that. I'm sorry, I don't believe that. I'm trying. I'm touching my toes every day. Isn't that <laughs> funny? That's like my this year since I'm like old now. I've decided making to make baby step goals. Okay, and one of those goals is to be able to touch my toes. That's <laughs> good. I've never been able to, and I can now. But now I can put my fingertips on the ground. And the back of my legs still hurt so bad and my body shakes so bad. Mm. And I think by the end of the year, I want to put my palms flat down on the ground and be, be able, able to straighten to. my legs. But you would, you'll, I mean, it's, you'll be able to, you'll be able knows? to, and this is good. You're making yourself Satan ready. You're like Satan. If you're, I just want to be ready for Satan when he possesses me. <laughs> Satan's like, but you have to do that, but backwards if you're going to be one of mine. <laughs> He loves a back bend, Satan. Satan loves, loves Satan. You know what Satan also loves? A twitchy moment where you're twerking. Like you sort of like your it's like, a, it's like your head. Yeah. Like no, not twerking. What's it called? The the twitchy dancing. Um, uh, like crumping. Flo- not crumping. Like flossing. Not flossing. It's, like, it's not. It's like the crumping. Like it's not. It is sort of. Yeah, I guess crumping. He, you know, Satan. He just enjoys some visual performances. Yeah. He's <laughs> truly, he's like, I'm a big Twilight Tharp fan. Yeah. He's like choreographing moving out. Okay. <laughs> so, um, back in the billiards the room, let's see what's going on. Oh yeah. CT and John are talking about politics and then MJ's like, can I come in? They're like, yeah, yeah. Come on in. She's like, are you sure? Just come in already. Okay. Stop lurking in fucking doorways, MJ. So she comes in and they're joking that John's going to get the guillotine and stuff like that. And, um, MJ's like, Guys, I mean, I know people are mad, but we couldn't, I couldn't predict predict it. And CT's like, whatever helps you justify it, right? (laughs) 
Yeah, and MJ is just like really upset that she voted out of Faithful. She tells us, you know, that she still thinks the arguments that were made for Phaedra were weak and vague and just didn't add up at all. But now she's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what I do now. So CT's like, so you know what? You guys decide to pick, you know, pick what you pick and that's it. You know, I, yeah, I changed my mind. You guys did it and that's okay. You know, some of us like very tight jeans that show off our gams. And some of you like flowing dresses. It's, you know, yeah, everyone makes their own choices in life. Listen, you know what? Some of you made asses out of yourselves, and but no one's ass is bigger than my actual ass, and that's really all that Ronnie is taking notes on right now. So I don't have any idea what's going on in this scene. I was like, can I have that butt? Can I please just have that butt? <laughs> it's just like his legs sometimes just look like a a bed that was. That was made in the military. I feel like know, they look like, like two <laughs> circular towers, like leaning towers of pizza. They they look his sometimes his legs just they look like boomerangs, like just big chunky boomerangs. And the boomerang, I don't those know, are thin. Sort of like they no, but like chunk, they're chunky. It's a chunky boomerang. A I don't chunky know. Chunky boomerang, I, candlesticks. They look like candlesticks. <laughs> I'm going with cannons. What's chunky? I'm cannons. going with towers of pizza. Fuckable like towers of pizza. Hams. Pizza. Pizza. Hams. Hams on stilts. <laughs> it's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens commercial. Welding instructor Alex DeClaire knows VR training platforms like ForgeFX help students master their skills. There's a big learning curve with welding. Virtual reality simulates that exact muscle memory that they need. Learn more at meta.com slash metaverse impact. Hey, it's Payne, and I'm here to tell you that we're back with a brand new season of Up and Vanished, called Up and Vanished in the Midnight Sun. In this newest season of Up and Vanished, I'm investigating an unsolved missing persons case in Nome, Alaska, on the edge of the Arctic Circle. Florence Okpialik, an Alaska native, was last seen on August 31st, 2020. And I've spent the last year in Alaska trying to find out what happened to her, putting myself in the most dangerous positions I've ever been in. You don't want to miss this brand new season of Up and Vanished. It is by far the most intense investigation I've ever been a part of. From Tenderfoot TV, Up and Vanished in the Midnight Sun is available right now. Listen for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. So then, uh, let's see. Uh, he's like, oh, yeah, that click of girls, one of them's got to be a traitor. Don't, don't, John. And he knows it's Phaedra, but God damn it, he loves her. So what should I do? So now Phaedra is talking to Sheree and Sandra. And Sheree is like, wow, Phaedra, this has been your uh, the round table, huh? She's like, yeah. So now's the time where Phaedra really needs to come out with a plan. She needs mm -hmm. to be like, you know what I thought was fishy? So and so acted this kind of a way. Yeah. But or I don't want to say Trishel. anything to them. But, you know, Trishel's like, Whoa. or how about like, Trishel worked me up and da 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 da, and put me in a situation where I was coming after Peter. And actually, Peter was good. Like, maybe start just throw some people under the bus. And Phaedra instead is like, hmm. Yeah, she won't mm. have an opinion really on anything except Peter sucks, which we all know that you don't like Peter, you know. But right. seeing as how Peter just got sent home um, and he was innocent, you need something else. <laughs> you just need yeah, something it's else. Time. It needs it's to time be to like, throw people I think what Trishel is doing is making it so that she made it a thing between me and Peter. So if Peter was found innocent somehow i'm guilty which doesn't even make any sense like there's not even logic in that and she's coming so hard for yeah. me every single day that it makes me wonder is she a traitor and she was trying to yeah. just keep her whole team in this whole time because i know i'm not a traitor but she never even says i'm not a traitor you know right she, she's she, like, kind of she, like hmm and then looks towards the croissant table she and she doesn't do anything to build a case, and I mean that's what what's been so frustrating about the choices for murders is that they don't do anything to create a narrative for the faithful. So, but but Phaedra could change that. She could say, you know, makes me wonder. You know, I was honestly starting to think that Peter 
was what I really thought he was a traitor and I thought he was killing up people on his own team to make me look bad because, you know, like what if I were a traitor, if people come after me, if people say, accuse me of being a traitor, if I'm a traitor, I'm not going to kill up those people because then it just proves their point. So like, why would I go after the Peter pals if I were a traitor? It doesn't make sense, but it would make sense for someone on the Peter pals to say those things and then kill off people from their own group to make it look like it was me doing it. And I, I would just like, I mean, Sheree would not be able to follow. You'd have to do it about six times for, to, for Sheree to get it. But then, uh, but you could say like, maybe it was Trishel. Maybe Trishel has been playing us all along. You know, she's well, also, like, if she said it in front of Trishel, if she was like, you know, or during these round tables where she's like, you know, this is fishy. I know I'm not a traitor, but Trishel just keeps coming at me so hard. She's obviously sowed so much division that everyone assumes I'm a traitor just because yeah. Peter went home, which had nothing to do with me. Exactly. And obviously Trishel is a fucking liar. She's had so many people that mm -hmm. she's accused have been innocent. You know, she just goes off. Trishel will lose her fucking mind. Yeah, because Trishel has not had to play defense. And you someone looking completely guilty. Or what about when Trishel was freaking out for the shield and all of that stuff? Like, yes. so that was like way too much, you know? Like she was obviously faking it or whatever. Just make Trishel spin you out and she would have had a chance, you know? But... Trishel has had a, a, a huge amount of privilege in the, the fact that she has not had to play this game on defense. And, and Phaedra has had to be on defense. And Peter had to be on defense. And Parvati had to be on defense. But, uh, but Trishel has never had to be. And she's always come in really strong for people all season long. And someone like Phaedra needed to just turn the tables on her, get her off her game, get her like, like shock her, you know, get her flustered. Uh, I think that's 100% what she needed to do, but she just doesn't do anything, she which is like as much it. as we love Phaedra, we have to admit she's maybe not an amazing traitor. Not at this point. I think she's just so beat down at this point. It's like how many times, you know, like usually they accuse somebody and they move on to somebody else. But this time it's just like every single time they're like, well, okay, we'll get someone else, but still Phaedra, but still Phaedra. And they just keep coming back. But you can't be beat down if you're a traitor because that's the name of the game. Like the name of the game is that like you are working against the group, and so if they I know, if but the I heat think is on you, the, yeah, I, don't, I think human nature like they can't stop but get their feelings hurt. You know what yeah. I mean? Because it is like these people just don't like me. I mean, at some point they're like, okay, well, everyone thinks I'm untrustworthy and no one likes me, and so you start to take it personally. You know? Yeah. And she apparently is because you can see her breaking she down does. mentally not breaking down but shutting down i guess is the best way to put it she just shuts down and they're like well they're coming for you every week phaedra you know what's what's up with that she goes yeah but they don't have any evidence they just say i feel it in my gut which i think is also kind of feelings hurty you know like she hasn't yeah. really done anything i just think she would be gross you know <laughs> like right i think that's probably how she's taking it that's how i would take it yeah, I mean, it's interesting because if I were innocent and people kept coming for me, I would definitely be more in my feelings because I'm like, I'm innocent and I'm trying to explain to you that I'm innocent. If I'm if I'm working against the group, I mean, I guess I would be in my feelings if if people are coming at me not with evidence, but based because they just feel like there's That's something what she's inherently saying. evil. She's like, there is and no so, evidence. They're just saying it's in my gut that it's you, you know, like there's something wrong with you. Right. Well, either way, she's not doing anything to change the narrative, which is disappointing. And so Kate and Phaedra go to the turret, and Kate's like, you know, Phaedra, I feel bad for her. I mean, she knows everybody's looking at her, but, you know, she should have, like, been a whole lot smarter with her murders before I got here. But, you know what? I'm staying loyal to my fellow Bravo girl, who, you know, also happens to be my fellow traitor. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly already bored. Why am I still even here? So they come take off their hoods, and Phaedra's like, Jesus Christ, I mean, can I get a boiled egg? And Kate's like, well, you know, I'm, I just want to talk about, I mean, they were coming really hard for you. And Phaedra's like, yeah, and of course, then you've got John. And then tomorrow when I have died a horrible death, I'm like, oh my God. And Kate's like, yeah, I was like, enough, you get it. You think we get it? You think Phaedra's a traitor? Enough! That's when they're like, yeah, we should have a word limit. I mean, Jesus Christ. I like how they turn into the audience at this part. They're just like, oh my God. And then John, did you like, I don't even think I even liked his shirt. What about CT's legs? Oh my God, his legs are amazing. I know, I love his legs. I can't stand Trishel's berets. <laughs> it's just like the game stops and we're just like watching us on TV. 
So then, um, so basically, Phaedra's like, uh, you know, saying how CT doesn't support her anymore. Uh, but he's got the shield, so he's not really a contender to kill. So it's really between Kate's like, all right, you want to do the numbers game? Let's do the numbers game, which was a mistake. They should not have done the numbers game. They should have thrown done someone really random just to confuse people with whatever time they have left but they decide they're gonna it's gonna be between trichelle and john which is really gonna look bad for for phaedra i think it will i my thoughts on this were they're fucked no matter what um phaedra's fucked no matter what i think i don't Mm -hmm. think there was any getting out of this for her (laughs) i think especially not playing not playing the way she's playing in this episode so I think that at least they got another person that's not a Bravo person out, um, which I think is good for the Bravo side in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I think that's why it's like, let's play a numbers game, then fine. If they want to turn it into Bravo people versus the non-Bravo people, then fine. Let's just murder one of them anyway, which I liked. But also it's a good move on Kate's part because Kate knows that Phaedra's probably going to go home. You know what I mean? Right. Right. There's not. There's not much she can do. So um, they give Alan the vote and everything. And, um, you know, Phaedra's like, you know what? Like, I'm going to put on my big girl panties and we're going to just do this again. So now it's time for breakfast. And it's the player's penultimate day in the castle. The traitors have just committed their seventh murder. And who has made it through the night? So first we see MJ and Sandra arrive. Um, And by the way, I just have to say... I'm proud of myself because I did say it early in the season. I think MJ is going to be a sleeper. And I think she's going to make it to the end, and she's going to make it to the final episode. So that's exciting. Yeah. So MJ, um, so good for MJ. It's the final episode, right? Yeah, and by next week it's like Crazy. in four days. Yeah. So uh, MJ and Sandra come in first, and Sandra's like, "Girl, it's just me and you," and they're just like excited. They're like, "Oh my god, yeah!" And then um, MJ is just going through it. She's feeling very emotional because they lost a faithful and. You know, MJ has a track record of like being really close to the to the right vote and then messing up at the last second. So it's kind of like eating her up a little bit. And then, um, you know, it's a typical one by one. They start coming in and being like, I'm shocked. Who do you think it is? Mm -hmm. Um, And then um, Phaedra's like, you know, I like CT, but obviously I'm disappointed that he thinks it's me you know that sucks Mm -hmm. and ct's like come on sit down you need something you want some eggs i was like oh my god that is you might as well just accuse her in front in front of everybody just say it because of course you know that she's putting herself under the gun by Mm -hmm. wanting eggs too badly you know he's like i found you out i finally figured out your egg code the best part about this whole breakfast sequence um was uh watching sandra predict who was coming through the door because you hear like a Uh oh that's a guy that's a guy that's a guy that's a dude that's a guy that's a guy knock (laughs) ah that person's addicted to crackers i can tell that person's got a lot of carbs that's a goat that one's a goat that's actually a goat there's a goat in the castle someone should let them know there's a goat there's a goat in the castle that person isn't moisturizing i can tell you that much you're not moisturizing (laughs) their hair that is a dry haired knock that's Jeff Probst. I remember that from Survivor. That's a Jeff Probst knock. <laughs> that is a girl in a beret who's called the police on a bunch of innocent people. <laughs> I got you. It's a robot. There's a robot. The robots are finally here. You know, Skynet's taken over the castle. I knew it would happen someday. Mm. Um, so they're trying to guess who's not going to come. And it's between John and Trishel. And guys, it's... Uh, Phaedra's like, well, I think that, uh, I think she, wait, oh, they're talking about Kate. And Phaedra's like, I think she's a faithful, which is fishy because Phaedra never has said that about anybody, you know? I know, Phaedra, why do you, like, actually finally make a statement about someone as a traitor? Like, that was so bad. It's like, oh, gosh. You should, like, every single person, it's like, what do you think about, what do you think about, you know, Peter? Well, you know, what do you think about Sandra? Well, these eggs are nice. What do you think about Kate? She's definitely faithful. Innocent, totally faithful. (laughs) Innocent, totally totally innocent. (laughs) So CT's like, do you think anybody's a traitor? She's like, well, there has to be a traitor. Right. And he's like, she's a traitor. I get it. Yeah, she's really, yeah, she's, 
You know, but by the way, let's also never forget how much Dan fucked up her game because he really did. I cannot wait for the reunion. It looked like they taped it this weekend, and um, and uh, basically, uh, I'm ready for. I hope Andy Cohen really grills Dan, and I think he will because I think Andy Cohen has Phaedra's back way more than he has Dan's back. Well, listen, man, there's no honor among thieves. Dan was trying yeah. to save himself. You know, that's the that's the game, and Parvati was too. And we've seen Phaedra turn on them when she has to. There's no. There's none of this. Be a better person, Dan. <laughs> By the way, I want to say, I want to say, speaking of, you know, you always say how uh, Trishel looks like she's dressed like American Girl Place. And um, uh, our friend Paul was at the Grove this weekend and saw Trishel and CT there eating um, at a restaurant and laughing, like chuckling it up. And I thought, you know, I'm sh at first I thought like, oh, gosh. Of course, these two would go to like the most public space in all of LA to have their lunch. But then I realized, actually, it was probably because Trishel thought the American Girl place was still at the Grove. I was going to say, she could get back into her box there and go to rest. <laughs> yeah, she's like ready to go to the box. So next time she was cast on TV. Is there no longer an American Girl doll store at the Grove? I think it's gone. Wow. Wow. I think it's gone. I should double check. I mean, there have been a lot of changes. The Sir La Tab became a William Sonoma. So, I mean, oh, God. what is this What's life? the difference? I mean, that's so, so, don't you think that's I have so to say, similar? I had, They're like, wow, I had, overpriced <laughs> kitchen gadgets. When, I had a very surreal moment. I, I had, okay, this is such a stupid, bougie story, but I had a surreal moment because I, I went in there like nine months ago. I was like, I'm going to go into Sir La Tab. So I walked in. And I just was like, I'm gonna browse around, but like everything, it was it was sort of top, but everything looked different. And then it was like confusing. And then I was like, but now I'm seeing William Sonoma stuff. I was like, did William Sonoma like did they merge or something? And so I literally walked up to a person. I go, what store am I in? <laughs> and he's like, William Sonoma. I was like, really? I thought this was Sir Latab. He's like, no, they left. We took over. So. Yeah, well, it was just a weird. It's it's a weird thing to be in a store and realize the store that you thought you were in is not the store at all. That's like when that when I went to Tom Tom the first time and just kept looking for vibrators. <laughs> and you said, "What store am I in?" Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Why isn't this silverware in a cock ring?" I'm so confused, <laughs> darling. It is just look closer. Uh, so then, um, there you know, Sheree's like, "I thought Phaedra was a good person. Hopefully, she's innocent." <laughs> Hopefully she's not really a murderer. Sure, he's still not <laughs> understanding the game, thinking everybody has literally been killed. So, um, <sighs> who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Ooh, bum 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 bum. That's a John Knock. That sounds like a John Knock. That sounds like a guy who doesn't use any kind of hair products and has like a rosy cheek from drinking too much brown liquor at night. That's someone who lies about his asthma. Knock. There he is, Trishel and Kate enter. Dun dun dun. Oh, yeah, no, he, she was wrong. Sorry. Trishel and Kate enter, which means John is dead. Yes. And uh, Kate's like, yeah, I don't think he's coming. So I haven't really heard any labored breathing in the hallways. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm finally able to speak at breakfast, which means that John must not be here. So that's nice. I don't. My tinnitus isn't acting up, so I'm guessing John's not talking. <laughs> So uh yeah, so John uh so John is dead, he's gone, and then we see John. Um they basically decide to kill him because they feel like he's the most commanding at the round table. Um and that people would really listen to him. So they decide to kill him. And he's still doing a fucking monologue up there. Oh, by the trait well I'm not shocked by my macabre fate. <laughs> I was aunt to Phaedra, and she wasn't going to allow me to hang around any longer. I say by the decree of the late queen and the, the current king, Charles. Okay, all right, all right. You're, you're killed. You're killed. So um, they're all, like, sad. And Trishel's, like, completely devastated. Devastated, okay? I mean, every, everybody's getting killed around me. Everybody's getting killed. So how do I convince Sheree, MJ, and Kate to vote against Phaedra? Now, at this point, you know, I've, I had to concede, like, Phaedra's not doing the greatest in this episode so far. And usually this kind of thing only gets worse. So I'm just hoping Trishel annoys everybody to the point where they just go against Trishel no matter what. I mean, yeah. at this point, a fan just has to hope that people are going to be like, you know what? 
Obviously, Phaedra is a traitor, so let's make a deal with Phaedra to keep us around and kill off the goody two-shoes. Since Phaedra's game is over anyway, why doesn't she give her game to the other Bravo people? And, uh, I mean, that's got to be a That's actually a really right. interesting strategy to be like, listen, I think you're a traitor. I'm not going to vote you out. But let's get rid of those goody two-shoes CBS and MTV people. <laughs> Can he, can he get rid of Trishel? Yeah. <laughs> and then when, at Trishel. the end, it'll be against these faithfuls. Like, you're in a corner. There's no way you're going to win this now. But if we win as Bravo people, that's kind of winning as a team. So, you know, I don't think you're yeah. allowed to do that, though. Be like, well, I am a traitor, right? I don't think you can admit you're not. People. I don't think you're allowed to say that. But Phaedra could be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And then takes care of business. You know, right. we've, we've all seen cop movies where people make deals. It's yeah. like, I don't know what you're talking about. As they go like this. They, move, look, they look to the right. They put their hand out to the left and get a little cash. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, so like um, that. they start talking about um, <laughs> John being gone. And CT's like, whoa, well, you know, look, I hope I'm as functional as he is when I'm his age. And Phaedra's like, how old is John? Does anybody know? I feel like he probably hit 60 when he was five years old and has just stayed there the whole time. And MJ is <laughs> like, um, I don't think he's old. I just think that people in England don't get Botox, so we can't really tell. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, again, I'm a Love Island UK watcher, so I can definitely assure people that people in England do get Botox and fillers, etc. Uh, just, you know, maybe not people in the royal family. I mean, poor Camilla Parker Bowles. But uh, we then go to Sheree, who's like, ah, oh, poor John. He did he did pay a lot for that muffler. No, Sheree, we're not in the Meineke commercial. What what are we doing here then? What's going on? So <laughs> MJ's like, let's raise a, t a glass for John. And so they just like toast to John. And um, and now they're debating. Kate's like, so um, how many traders do you think are left at this point? I'm surprised that Phaedra wasn't like, I think there are two two traders, and neither of them are you and me, Kate. <laughs> um, Phaedra, you could be a little bit more discreet. Thanks. So um, MJ thinks two, and Sandra's like, worst case scenario, three, three worst. Well, worst case five. Well, worst case would be six. Worst case would be everybody here's a traitor. When Shrey's like, three? Oh my gosh, not three. Three what, by the way? Mm -hmm. Chairs? Mm -hmm. Commercials. Here comes one right now. Hey, grown-ups! The Cat in the Hat cast is a new podcast from Wondery, perfect for the whole family. Join the Cat in the Hat and your favorite Dr. Seuss characters as they get whisked away on a new adventure every week. Fish dreams of creating his very own polite and quiet podcast. That is, until he gets a surprise visit to his fishbowl podcast studio from the cat in the hat himself. And it becomes very clear that the cat has other plans for the podcast. And those plans are the opposite of quiet. Sing along to new favorite songs, try your luck at Titanic tongue twisters, have some fun with wondrous wordplay, and most importantly, bring your family along for all of the adventures in the Cat in the Hat cast. Follow the Cat in the Hat cast on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to the Cat in the Hat cast early and ad-free on Wondery Plus. Join Wondery Plus in the Wondery app or on Wondery Kids Plus on Apple Podcasts today. So Alan comes in and it's the penultimate day. I just wanted to add a thrill there because I'm not going to have many more chances to do it. So hmm. let's go play a game. Politics may be a deadly game, John, but mine is even deadlier and it has capes. <laughs> Crashes his picture on the ground. <laughs> Your numbers are dwindling by the day. By, your, your numbers are dwindling, and by the end of the day, one more of you will be banished at the round table. And Sheree, once again, we're not talking about a pizza place. First up, we have a mission to complete. But you know, you'll cross that bridge when you come to it. So Satan goes, bridge. That's a guy's bridge. I can tell by the way he said it, it's a bridge of guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now... CT's like, oh, this is great. I'm the only guy left in this house because they're like getting fuzz off of his face. You know, they're like cats licking a, 
a little baby cat to make yeah. sure it's okay. They're all like <laughs> I'm pinching him, him and combing his hair, like spit licking his hair and getting smudges off his face. He's like, I love being the only guy in a group. They are calling him the Castle Daddy, which I think that works. So uh, Phaedra and Sandra go outside to play like oversized chess, which I don't know why it really bothers me. The oversized chess thing that I see around it just I don't know. It's I can't explain why it bothers me. It just does. You know what bothers so, me? Regular chess. How do you mm. even play that game? I just don't understand it. I've never understood it. People try to explain it to me. I just don't get it. And you know who else doesn't seem to get it? Everybody. The only people who really seem to get it are just people who don't get me. You know what I mean? There are people who look at me like, ew. And I'm, I think it's like their instinct. Like They can just mm. tell I'm dumb. Or something. I don't know what it is, but I don't like chess people, and chess people don't like me. You know who you know who understands chess? Hmm. People of a certain age, just when um, a cataclysmic event is about to happen to a city, because doesn't it happen like every disaster movie? Like just before a meteor hits, <sighs> like New York City or or like Los Angeles, they always show two old guys in little like little little caps playing chess in a park. And then they look up and a meteor hits the city <laughs> like every single time. They're like, you know what will really it you know what really shows how horrifying this doomsday scenario is, is that it's happening when two older gentlemen are playing chess. They were just feeding the pigeons and then <laughs> boom, they're gone. You know that girl who's in the Queen's Gambit, that girl with the praying mantis Anna face? Tana, Anna Tana Jai? I can't even with her because she was she played chess in that TV show. And I was like, I'm not yeah. I'm not gonna support her. <laughs> I'm How not do you feel about support chess cake? chess loving ass. I will not do it. <laughs> Isn't there a ch- something called a chess cake? Do you like chess cake? No, I don't. It's too much effort a for a pie. cake. I just give me the fucking cake. I don't need it to be checkered or whatever. What about you know the, what I do love? Chess the musical. I now that's say, a musical. musical. Yeah, mm. I love that. Maybe what I'm about- a nobody <laughs> side. <laughs> okay, so then we go to um, playing this game, right? So they're playing chess. this outside chess game. And, Which um, I guarantee they don't, they don't really know what they're doing either as they play it. And, uh, you know, they're talking over there. And Sandra's like, she could be the biggest traitor here. I'll tell you that much. That's her big plan. And meanwhile, MJ is talking to Kate and Sheree. And she's watching that chess game. And she's like, guys, I don't trust people in my chess. <laughs> Which one should we get out? Yeah, she goes, okay, don't fucking tell anyone what we say, okay? So tomorrow, it's going to be down to winning or losing the whole entire pot, right? And Sheree, you and I both know that we have to vote out, vote, vote out Phaedra, right? She has a gift for maintaining her cool in very high stress situations. So that draws the obvious conclusion that she has got to go. Phaedra has to go. And Sheree's like, got it. Phaedra has to go. Where is she going to? Do we need to buy our ticket? I've got an Orbitz account. Okay, you're not following, are you? Mm. Not really, but I love your enthusiasm. And Kate's like, mm, I was thinking Sandra, mostly because how she guesses about knocks. It's just weird. It's weird behavior. I don't really like knock detectors. I say we kill her. I say anybody who judges knocks should die. That's what I say. <laughs> and so they're like, wait a minute. MJ's like, I'm missing something because Kate's smart. Uh, like, look, is Kate smarter than me? Of course. <laughs> yes, she is. Um, and now she's saying that. So am I missing something with Sandra? What's happening? You know, so now she's dating herself. And all so the, now she's all like, the internet, it is Sandra. By the way. You know, she's like, they're playing chess together. Oh, my God. <laughs> all the internet has like has been making memes about MJ, how she always gets so close to the right answer. And then, like, one of them was like, MJ... Like there's like a gust of wind and, and MJ totally changes her idea, which she gets this close every single time. She does, yeah. She guesses so, it and then someone else talks her out of it in two seconds. It's like, what about peanut butter? It is peanut butter. So yeah, so now she thinks that maybe it is Sandra. And so Kate's like, I mean, I'm gonna do everything I can to stop this traitor son for Phaedra. She's my queen, you know? Gotta protect the queen. So um, Sandra's like, now the trick is to make it to tomorrow. That's what we want to do. Because you know what? Tomorrow, that's our last day to guess every single knock at breakfast. I'm really close to getting them all right. 
So inside, Trishel and CT see them out there. And Trishel's like, oh my god, I'm not wasting my berets for this game. I still have three <laughs> more to whip out. We've got to figure out how to get them. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to be like, why are you Why are you guys not voting against Phaedra? What do I have to do? I'm calling the police. So he's like, whatever. you know. So she goes out there. She sees him. And she's like, I'm going out there. I may as well. So she walks out there with her plastic pants. And... Yeah. um. She, she's like, if they stop talking, then you'll know. So she's like, <laughs> by the way, they, stop talking they can they don't see her talk lipstick you. coming a mile away, by the way, crazy lady. She walks out and she's like trying to hide behind a pillar. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the that's air the changes thing. when Trishel comes close, you know? <laughs> but also like people may just stop talking because they just don't want to talk to you, Trishel. You're just like super annoying. Yeah. So she's like, hey, can I join this exclusive group? Because I'm going to call the manager on you guys. And Kate's like, what? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course you can come in here. <laughs> so are you guys like ready to talk logic and reason yet? Or am I going to stop to wait a little bit? I'm like, wow, you're really doing a great job of winning these people over by like making fun of them to their face. And Kate's like, I mean, are you okay? She goes, no, actually I'm not. <laughs> you guys know who the traitor is, okay? It's Phaedra. So, I mean, come on. I mean, you guys are just hoping that she'll take you to the end, okay? And I've been, like, spot on in the past two banishments, so people need to listen to me, okay? Then. <laughs> and I'm just like, look, there's no way in hell I'm going to let a traitor take off and steal everybody's money. Whatever you see as a mistake that we made, it was not intentional whatsoever. So this is where I feel like the move would have been, because she's just annoying, right? Trishel's yeah. just annoying, and she's coming in everyone's face. She's accusing them of basically being a little clique who will do anything for each other, no matter what. So we know that she's going to be coming for all of them, and they should know that she's going to be coming for all of them. So this is where I thought they should be like, fuck this girl. Like, we yeah. still got time to find the real traitors. I don't even care if this girl's a traitor or not. I don't want her to win. Let's get rid of her. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would have even maybe said, like, you know what's funny? We were just starting to hatch this great, like, this theory. We we're putting the pieces together about Sandra. It was just about to happen. And then in comes Trishel, and she just destroys it all. Do you notice that she's always doing that? Every time we feel like we're building some, like a, like a narrative, she comes in and distracts us away from it. That's traitor behavior. Well, it would be if she knew what they were talking about. Right. But I mean, I think you could probably pitch that reasonably to Sheree, and Sheree may not well, Sheree, pay attention yeah. to that giant hole. Sheree. <laughs> Sheree would be like, that's it. You could be like, Sheree, here's how it works where we are right now in London. There's a clock. It's called Giant Ben. And when it's off, <laughs> Trishel needs to be voted out, or the clock will end and the world will end. And she'll be like, I'm getting rid of her. <laughs> that's it. You can just say whatever you wanted, and Sheree would be on your side. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyway, Trishel guilts them. She's like, it's just like, I just felt like it's like you guys are such a group. They're like, oh, this group, this group, this group. And MJ's like, no, no, no. Like, if you're feeling you're on the outside, you are a hundred percent of us, Trishel. Are you past your prime as a reality star? Perhaps. Are you on an inferior network? Perhaps. Are you part of us? Nominally. But don't worry. You are welcome here. Are you doing Fievel cosplay? You sure are. I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> so then we Has go... Has Netflix canceled Emily in Paris because they see what you're wearing? Yes. <laughs> so then um, now they have to head to the challenge. The prize is standing at $129,750. So now this one is they have to jump on a bunch of platforms and kind of skip across the water to get to take gold over it. So they have to hold gold and take it over the water and then put it, the gold in this measuring thing, a scale, and then the whatever. They have to take a lot of gold. It's basically Wipeout. It's basically Scottish Wipeout. And, and they it's so fun watching. Um, it, this is basically like watching a bunch of musical theater kids try and do sports. <laughs> I mean, every single week. It's like these people are just literally all terrible. And I love it. <laughs> None of them can ever do it. You know, they have to like, they're all falling in the water. They can't make it over the I know. over the things. But then um, CT starts kicking ass. And so does Trishel, right? Because they're challenged people. Yeah, so CT, and of course, like, CT is great. He's basically doing it all for the ladies. <laughs> He's got all the gold. His legs are looking thicker than ever in that wetsuit, and he's just going back and forth. And Trishel's doing it well, too. She's also 
doing a good job. But MJ is the one who found the shield because they had to do like they had to like dig out all these gold nuggets out of a pile of manure or something. And MJ has the shield and she has to go across these bridges to drop off that shield, but she can't seem to get they're not bridges, they're pontoons. She can't seem to get past a certain number of pontoons. And so as usual, the challenge is totally irrelevant. But it was exciting watching MJ make her triumphant last second journey across the pontoons because she does eventually get there. And you can see that even Alan is into it. He's like cracking up this entire challenge and he's like excited. Like you can see he's like having a very hard time staying in character. He's just now a spectator like the rest of us. Yeah. Uh, and it is pretty it is pretty funny. And they're so cute how they all support each other. And <laughs> MJ is they're like, so oh my cute. god. This is if I jump from this one platform to that other platform, my whole life is going to be worth it. I'm going to realize that that little girl who just wanted, who just wanted to be right one time, finally was all worth it. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake, just <laughs> jump to the goddamn thing and don't fall in the water for Christ's sake. But she does it, and it's really sweet. And um, so she's <laughs> unable to be murdered. She does get it. It's it was it was. It was really cute. I think your analogy of it was the drama kids having to play sports. It really is exactly every single what it was. time. You're Watching like, Thank Phaedra God for reality TV because there would be no place <laughs> in the world for most of these people. You know, these are not housewives are not meant to be doing physical challenges, and they were just. I mean, Sandra. Sandra's not a housewife, and she was on Survivor, so this is very Survivorish. But it was. Poor Phaedra trying to make that leap from pontoon to pontoon. Well, Sandra, and her legs yeah, were... Sandra was like, oh, hell. Like, Phaedra was <laughs> like, why in the world would I do this? You know? Her legs were trembling. Oh, yeah. It was um, great. You know, this is, has nothing to do with anything. I don't even know why I'm bringing this up. But there was one point in this episode. I think it's it was on the way over here when they were in the buses. I was like, Sandra is smoking. That chick's, like, really good looking. Like, she's a beautiful lady. And I never really concentrate on like how hot people are i mean unless they've got legs like cts then i can think of nothing else but i don't really concentrate on that stuff you know like people have personalities and brains guys but i was like damn this woman is fucking fine okay she has cheekbones she has those cheekbones She's you know just a gorgeous gorgeous i have lady. been and good let me skin. Tell you something. maybe it's because it was the the uh, esthetician date was coming up but i was like <laughs> i just want to take my picture in a sandra and be like, just make me look like this. Do whatever it takes. I want to look like this. She's a stunning lady. Let me tell you something. I am going on to year 19 of being a Sandra Diaz Twine fan. Okay. Really? She may just be Sandra Diaz now. Yeah, her first season was of uh, Survivor was 2005, Survivor Panama, which continues to be one of my all-time favorite seasons. I was such a fan of her on that show, and I was so delighted when she actually won it because I didn't think she was going to win it. She was so crafty. She would hide behind bushes. She would listen on pe listen in on people. I absolutely loved her, and I felt for the longest time that she was like an overlooked winner. People always talk about Boston Rob and all that stuff. And then when she won a second time, then she, I really feel like she started to get her the respect. And uh, I've loved Sandra. I can't believe it's been two decades of being just like the biggest Sandra fan. And I love that she's made it this far in the game. I actually don't think she's been so great on this game. Like her reads have not been wonderful. And I also feel like we haven't seen the full splendor of Sandra on the traders, but it makes me very happy that she's flourishing and that she might win the whole thing. She just might. That was my ode to Sandra that you, that you evoked out of me. Yeah. That was nice. Or invoked. That was, that was like a John along. <laughs> <laughs> that was a John Locke. And to that I say, God save the queen. <laughs> oh, okay, so they now have to go do this round table thing. But first they're gonna have some dinner. And um it was Trishelle and Sandra. And Sandra's like, listen, we already know it's Phaedra. And for Sheree's <laughs> like, I don't know. It just keeps piling up, piling up on Phaedra. What are we gonna do? So Outside, MJ is talking with Kate and CT, and um, Kate's like, well, listen, you know, like, if everyone thinks Phaedra is a traitor, then why don't we just say Phaedra for the final day? Like, there's no mystery in it. We'll just save her. Like, who cares? You know? Which None is actually what Peter was proposing. Right. Actually, when Peter tried to uh, switch it from poverty to Phaedra, that was what he was saying. But Kate's doing it now for more, you know, tricky reasons. And... Um, 
I feel like she's very convincing. She really does seem like a faithful when she's saying that, you know? And MJ is like, I don't know. I don't trust Phaedra the most, but I'm also very suspicious that Sandra's a traitor. It's kind of messed up. So now they're all like, MJ is now starting to get onto the Sandra bus, which is good for Kate for right now. So then inside, uh, Trishel, Sandra, and Sheree are talking, and they see everybody talking outside. And um, Trishel's like, um, I don't know about MJ and Kate. Look at them talking. They're t- like doing this. <laughs> oh, that's what you're doing in here. She makes me crazy. So Sandra's like, oh, yeah, she's doing a lot of talking out there. Kate never talks that much, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> I think it's yeah. fishy that all of a sudden Kate's animated. Like Kate is literally not animated. Kate is a still. You know what I mean? She's like a exactly. still a still portrait she's like one of those portraits <laughs> at disneyland that you walk past and you're like oh my god that portrait is staring at me you know she's but definitely some, like haunted still. mansion like a yeah she's a haunted mansion portrait so sandra okay. so she's like okay trishelle go talk to them and see if they quit talking so this is when they say like look if they're gonna quit talking and trishelle's like okay shrey and i will watch okay shrey are you watching oh okay shrey is she's touching the fireplace okay well i'll watch i will watch <laughs> so let's see um kate's like okay sandra uh, so now this is right they all shut up basically so kate's like okay well sandra sandra's here uh so uh we're thinking maybe we could s- consider rolling the dice tonight and figure out who the second traitor is and just banish them you know hmm. and sandra goes but who who's that she's like um Hmm. <laughs> Kate doesn't have a backup dancing? plan. <laughs> um, no. Hold on. I'm just going to do a little stretch, like lifting her ankle up to her ear. It's like, mm, just stretching it out here. <laughs> yeah. And well, the thing is, this is that uh, Kate probably should have said, she, she probably should have said, you know, we should try to figure out who number two is and bash them tonight. Do you have any ideas? But instead, she let Sandra ask that question. So now Kate has no, like, okay, so you guys are all sitting around here, and but no one has any, you're talking about who to banish aside from Phaedra, but none of you guys have any ideas. So that's like a red flag for Sandra, you know? Right. And Kate's like, um, you know what? Like, they're smart people. Let them arrive at their own conclusions. Giving them a fishing rod, but they, like, you know, they need to catch the fish. Catch the fish. Catch yeah. the fish. Okay, Sheree, it was a metaphor. You don't have to literally catch a fish. Could someone get uh, Sheree out of that, that boat over there? Mm-hmm. You have to play the game. So now Sheree finally has to talk to Vedra. So she sits her down and she's like, listen, you know I tell you everything. And I've tried to protect you because they are gunning, 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 gunning for you. Gunning for you. Gunning for you. Gunning for you. You got gunning? They got gunning for you they're gonna feel and phaedra's like oh god of course they are so she's like okay well if it's who if it's not you then who else and phaedra you know it's like well i mean it could be ct for all we know which mm-hmm. phaedra only comes after the people who have strongly come for her which is also fishy right. um so Sheree's like well they're mentioning sandra what do you think of sandra and Phaedra's like, well, she is a silent assassin, but I love her. And I kind of like that, that Phaedra's like, I'm not going to go against her. You know? Right. It's not worth it. I, like, I love her. Shreya's like, you know, at the end of the day, we all know the faithfuls cannot win the game if there's a traitor in it. So it's my job to get traitors out. We just have to find them. Now, what I would like to know is, what is a traitor? I'm sort of confused by this whole concept. <laughs> What do they trade exactly? Is, is it this like trading Trader Joe's <laughs> cards? Do they, is it is it a, an economy thing? Are they traders? And Phaedra's <laughs> like, uh, so Sheree's like, now tell me the truth. Look in my eye. Are you a trader? And Phaedra's like, boiled egg. <laughs> no. Are you a trader? These croissants are delicious. Just answer me. Are you a trader or not? God. Where do you keep Where do you keep getting those glasses of water? <laughs> so she gives a very long pause very long guilty pause and goes no she's like okay it's like yeah no so um 
Phaedra's like, oh my god, it's so difficult to lie. Okay, are you just trying to give up your entire law business at this point? Come on! I know. It was Listen. not difficult to lie. You're a real housewife. You're Phaedra, of all people. I mean, your whole thing is lying, Phaedra. Come on, we saw you taking money from a weed dealer in a parking lot in a, in a fucking exactly briefcase of cash. We're not, we want you to be a liar. That's why you were chosen for this. Don't wuss out on me now, Phaedra. You literally went on TV and had a baby and said the baby was five months old like it was like that you would carry the baby for five months just so that your mom would not think that you had premarital sex like you lie hey, come on and you're good at it it's okay so, so yeah so now we're at the round table and everyone's basically like it's going to be phaedra so as an audience member i think we're all thinking Okay, let's see what Phaedra pulls out. I mean, this is Phaedra mm -hmm. Parks. Surely she's going to whip something out, right? Right. Um, and Sheree is like, does not want to believe that that Phaedra has lied to her. So it's time to start the round table. And of course, Rochelle says, can I say something? I mean, when has anyone stopped you? I mean, of course you're going to say something. We're here to find the traitor. And like Alan said, this is one of the last times that we're going to be able to do that. And every faithful so far when people were showing their chalkboards has been like, you're going to see like you're making a mistake and I'm about to say that I'm faithful. Pretty much everyone has said that. And the only people that didn't do that were traitors. Phaedra, last night, I just noticed that you were very silent when someone had your name up there. I thought that was a red flag. I was like, mm, I don't think that this chalkboard theory, this is not a great theory in my mind. And Phaedra's just like, but it doesn't even have to be because Phaedra's doing such a bad job at reacting. She's just like, yeah. I've never heard anything so ludicrous. And MJ's like, well, I didn't think you were a traitor, but you know, I know that you could handle the pressure. Um, I don't know. And Sandra's like, well, you know, um, it's going to kill me if you end up being a traitor, but the shines are there. The shines are there. Go, knock on, the, knock on wood. She's like, traitor knock. That is a traitor knock, right? Unfortunately, <laughs> that is a traitor knock. Phaedra's like, well, this is a game, but let's not forget, I haven't done anything for my name to be written down, you know? And if you really look at it, none of you have anything concrete against me, which I think is her ultimate point that she should be making all this time, which is where's yes. the evidence except for this squeaky little girl in a beret squealing my name every single week, every chance she can. Yeah, the only thing I, I'm surprised it took her this long to say this, which is that the only reason why I'm in the hot seat is because Dan tried to throw a Hail Mary before he was voted out, and now it put a stink on me, and someone, and Trishel, it just wants to piggyback on it, but there's nothing, I've not actually done anything to warrant this sort of witch hunt, and it's ridiculous, and I'm offended, and you all know me, and should know better by now, and if anyone is a traitor, it's actually probably Trishel. Like, I don't know why she's not doing that, do it! Yeah. So Shrey's like, I don't want to believe that you're a traitor. People have said that maybe it was that blind loyalty, but I don't know, I don't know. I guess I'll buy an A. I'll buy an A. Can we buy an A? And so um, Phaedra's like, but we've been friends for 30 years. And Sherry's like, okay, but do you have anything else to offer us? You know? Um, and for Phaedra's just like, I'm exhausted. You know? Like, it gets to the point where I get sick of fighting. <laughs> Like, I'm so just tired. And you can see it. You know, she's just like, oh, my God. So now Kate's mad. She's like, I've gone to bat for her. And now she's not even going to try. Well, bad news. I'm not doing it anymore. You're on your own. Okay. Well, most people could just say you're on your own and not come up with a big soliloquy defending them. But Kate gets nasty. Like, damn. Yeah. It's Kate not like she not forgot happy. to clean the toilet lid on a on a super <laughs> yacht. What are you getting so mad for? What the hell. So this is actually a pretty short round table because it's pretty obvious what's going to happen. So Alan does the, the time for talk has come to an end. It's time to vote. So uh, they're voting, and it's really, you know, like, they all vote for Phaedra. But the significant thing is that Kate, when she votes for Phaedra, says, Phaedra, my vote's for you because there's not a person at this table besides you who I could even stomach voting for. In this game, you're more selfish than skillful, and it's not fun to play games with people who play that way. And what like, was that? Where did that come from? And you know, I, she does that thing where Kate, because, you know, Kate's usually pretty lighthearted and fun. Like, even when she's 
being sarcastic the whole time. She's just always like got this air of like, she's having fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even on below deck where she's just working with idiots. It seems fun, but then when she's not having fun anymore, she gets the Heather Dubrow black eyes where her eyes just turn into like button black and she just gets downright nasty. Like, what was that about? I mean, what the hell? Yeah. And Phaedra's like self, she just tells us like selfish. Oh no, she says selfish, and she so goes, "Yeah, more than skillful." I said it. There, I said it. Um, but unfortunately, I think this kind of betrayed Kate. Yeah, I she, think that Kate was annoyed at Phaedra, and she was annoyed that she felt like Phaedra wasn't doing any, like, wasn't helping the situation, was potentially bringing Kate down. And I think that Kate, I think that Kate also maybe thought she would be, she was being presenting like a like a faithful by doing this. Um, but I think she she definitely went. She like went too far, and she she missed the mark here because the amount of um, fury that she showed or bitterness is the sort of bitterness you'd expect from someone who is playing with Phaedra. And she literally says it's not fun to play games with people who play that way. And so, to me, it's a total red flag. I was like, "What are you doing, Kate? Just be yeah. chill." Yeah, because a faithful would have said something. They wouldn't have said selfish. They would have been like, "Oh." Well, I trusted you, but now it's looking like you murdered all of yeah. those people, and those were good people. I mean, that that would have been anger that made sense, but like you play a selfish game means selfish that you're teamed is... up together. So yeah, exactly. Oh, no, okay, it's no. Really, I don't know why she said that. I think well, that this is because be this, the pressure of it gets to you, you know? Because like we saw her first week of being a trader when she's like, "Oh my god." Can I do this? I can't do this. I don't want to lie to people. That's ridiculous. And then someone you think would be such a smooth trader actually was not at all. I mean, to the point She's... where MJ just walked into breakfast and was like, are you okay? You you look like a trader right now. I know. It's shocking. I thought that Kate would be like an effortless trader, but she has, I think, grappled with it more than we thought. So well, one of Kate's biggest selling points as a TV personality and as a person is her her honesty. You know, I mean, she's never like a liar. <laughs> she's snarky, mm -hmm. but she's her whole thing is like telling you exactly how it is. And sometimes those people are just, you know what? They're going to get caught. Okay. Like I'm yeah. evil, but it's very hard for me to keep what I'm really thinking inside. So I would be a very bad trader at the end of the day. Right. Um, so, uh, so they all vote Phaedra. Uh, Phaedra votes for CT and CT's like sexist. And they're they're all very nice. And, Everyone's nice because they all really like her, you know. But and... but Trishel is condescending. She's like, my thinking is very clear, but I think you'll leave with your head held high. You know, shut up, shut up, Trishel. Don't. I don't. I think it was supposed to be a compliment, but it sort of sounded like when you leave her, you act like a proper lady. I don't know. I just don't, I don't well, want to. just sucks no anyway. So Trishel's never going to say anything where I'm like, good point, Trishel. I just don't like Trishel. You know? Yeah. She's like a traffic cone with a beret. I just like, get out of my way. You know? <laughs> so, um, f so she gets the most votes and she's like, Alan, I am the most fabulous, faithful traitor. <laughs> <laughs> Hope there's no hard feelings, everybody. And they're, they're all, when she says faithful, they all like have a heart attack. <laughs> but the fact that Sheree still doesn't get it, she goes, faithful traitor. <laughs> Does she work for Charles Schwab? I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the traitor concept. So um, she said, you know, she's like, wishes them all luck and it's all nice. And so, uh, but then Phaedra, when she leaves, she's sort of like, God, Kate was getting a little too personal. I'm not mad at her, but like, She's doing what she knows how to do, and you know she basically is like, "I'm, I can't wait to get out of Scotland. I'm going home." So now, um, if this is that, this is like the the last murder is about is going to happen this evening. But before that happens, they're all going to still like talk and chat and everything, and and then basically tr they're they're sort of hanging out and they're asking Kate. So I think it's like, is it Sandra who asks Kate? She's like. Hey, Kate, I wanted to ask you about that selfish part that you said to Phaedra. And Kate's like, oh, well, um, well, because as I started to hear from, from y'all, and this is so I'm basically saying it's because you guys made me do this, all the murder she's done. And like, once I realized her pattern, I was like, this is gross. And that's like selfish. It was like selfish because you guys said, you guys said that she's a traitor and that's so she's selfish and gross. Have I convinced everyone? 
Makes sense, right? Totally makes sense. Dun, dun, dun. So she looks guilty as hell. And Sandra's like, uh, she looks guilty as hell. So. <laughs> wow. What are we going to do? Dun, dun, dun. So um, I'm wondering if Kate is going to get rid of uh, get rid of her tonight. Does Kate pick a traitor now? I mean, does she have to pick I another traitor? I don't think she can. I don't think so. I think that Kate has to. She has to keep Sandra. Because Sandra is the the only one who has any sort of suspicion on her. I think Kate has to kill. Who does Kate kill? She can't. MJ is safe. So it's Sheree, CT, Trichelle, Sandra. I think you keep Sandra because San, you, you're because you're framing Sandra, they Sandra. Could talk her into being a murderer everybody thinks she's already kind of a murderer so she's they already done the, the hard seeds. work for Sandra so she doesn't need to kill her she can she can she's the I one that's kills... like it'll be easiest to get voted out because she's already done the legwork on Sandra so I would say that she'd have to kill maybe CT CT yeah because Trishelle Trishelle or, Trish... or CT really I mean Trishelle has made the battle line so clear and most of them are Bravo people left so well, I don't if think you it kill, matters at this point. If you kill CT, you also keep the option open that you could frame Trishel to be a... Uh, well, it's hard to it's hard to say that Trishel is a traitor. No, I don't think that Trishel will be a traitor, but she's going to be a thorn in anybody's side. So, But, you know, the other thing we have to remember is that I don't like Trishel, so I want to see her go. But beyond not liking somebody, I think that um, Trishel is usually wrong. Trishel was correct about Phaedra, but in general, she's wrong. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think it might not be bad to keep her around and just hint at her somebody else. Get enough of a hint that she's constantly going for Sandra, you know? So yeah, I would say I think CT. That I would, well, actually, you would have to think, who would Sandra get rid of? Would Sandra... Would Sandra get rid of Sheree? I mean, I think Sheree stays because she's clueless. She's Sandra's generally clueless. Sandra's friends with all the Bravo girls. So I think I think there could be a world in which they could frame Sandra for getting rid of one of the CBS or MTV people. Right. I think that Sandra would... Would Sandra get rid of Trishel or RCT? I feel like Sandra... If you're... Okay, thinking of Sandra, get into Sandra's mindset. CT... But I don't know. I think that no, I think that Sandra would get rid of Trishel because she would Sandra would think CT's gonna help us get more money for the pot and then I'm gonna steal it. Oh, that's true, yeah. Well, I don't know. We're not gonna know until a few days. Um uh, everybody, thanks so much for being here. We'll be back with the season finale next week. Uh in the meantime, if you want this video or any of our recap videos or or bonus episodes, including last week's Miami episode, check us out on Patreon and go get tickets for the Netflix Comedy Festival and our European tour over at watchwhatcrappens.com. We will talk to you next time, everybody. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Stroll in the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no Trickolus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurt. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches, Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a can to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, my favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch, it's Victoria Cotchett. 
She ain't no shrinking Violet Kutar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.